Namaskar from Desh Sansa's Diplomatic Eye. Uh, I'm Mitra Bandhu Powdell. Welcome to the new episode. Uh, this is episode number 19. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's talk about uh, investment summit ritual or realistic initiative. Nepal is hosting the third edition of uh, investment summit in Kathmandu on April uh, 28, uh, 29, 2024. An official in the Ministry of Industry, uh, Commerce and Supplies before recording this episode notified me that the summit will be organized at the designated time. Prior to discussing the Nepal Investment Summit 2024, an impartial assessment of the shortcomings of previous summit held in 2017 and 2019 is imperative. Some experts believe that Nepal has improved the investment climate by amending labor and technology transfer uh, regulations uh, in the wake of the investment summit that took place four years ago. Nonetheless, a number of other regulations pertaining uh, to the matters such as those regarding intellectual property rights and repatriation protocols remain in effect. Others argue that Nepal is not a suitable destination for foreign direct investment due to recurrence of reshuffle in the cabinet as well as frequent alternation of the government. In the first investment summit held in 2017, investors expressed a desire uh, to invest in Nepal provided political stability and streamlined procedures were guaranteed. And government representatives gave assurances to this effect during the meetings. According to media reports and experts' view to encourage foreign direct investment, FDI, the government hyped up two investment conferences that it held. The outcomes were not promising though. Investing uh, promises totaling US dollar 13.5 billion from six nations mark the successful conclusion of the 2017 Nepal Investment Summit. Still, only a small portion of these promises were fulfilled in practice. Only 15 agreements totaling US dollar 12 billion were inked at the 2019 uh, Nepal Investment Summit demonstrating the government's quickness in amending several laws. The government presented 50 projects altogether. Among these were the promises made by international businesses as well as uh, the Nepali private industry. But so far, just a small number of them have advanced uh, noticeably. Uh, let's talk about the present status of FDI. According to data provided by the Department of Industry, 241 new FDI permissions were granted between July 17, 2023 and February 12, 2024. A total of 31 share purchase agreements, SPA, and share subscription agreements, SSA, have also been completed up to this point. Additionally, 31 technology transfer agreements, TTAs, in total were finished during this time frame. Likewise, 12,692 people committed to employment. The government of Nepal has sent an invitation to wealthy and well-known individuals worldwide, including American billionaire owner of SpaceX and Tesla uh, Elon Musk, Indian billionaire Gautam Adani, and Mukesh Ambani and the founder of Meta, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg to take part in the Investment Summit 3rd edition. In this regard, Dr. Dhirendra Koirala, a researcher at University of Kuala Lumpur and an expert in foreign direct investment, FDI, claims that one of the main advantages for the nation, such as Nepal, is the influx of capital brought uh, about by increased globalization. Dr. Koirala continues it's a good initiative to invite global leaders like Elon Musk, Zuckerberg, Adani, 
uh, Ambani, etc. Foreign direct investment stimulates capital development and infrastructure development. Uh, we currently need to create more jobs, he says. What are the prospects? Investments Board Nepal asserts that Nepal has a number of reasons to welcome foreign investment. It does have a cheap labor cost, a working age population of 57% uh, and, and membership in Shark, Beamstack, WTO, uh, MIGA, uh, UNESCAP, UNCTAD, and BRI. Moreover, Nepal signed bilateral investment promotion and protection agreement or BIPA uh, with five countries by granting them the same rights as domestic investors in the host nation a BIPA agreement safeguards foreign investors protecting their investments from non-commercial uh, losses like war armed conflict uh, riots terrorist attacks insurgency or emergencies is the goal According to the NBSM report on January 18, 1987, Nepal and its neighbor India inked their first double taxation avoidance agreement DTAA. After India, a second tax treaty was signed with Norway in 1996. Furthermore, bilateral tax uh, treaties have already been struck with nine other nations. Bangladesh is the nation with uh, which the agreement has most recently met, having been reached in March uh, 2019. These nations include China, Bangladesh, Korea, Pakistan, Thailand, Sri Lanka, Mauritius, and Austria. Thus, Nepal has agreements with a total of 11 uh, nations as of now. According to a report uh, from the Inland Revenue Department, IRD, negotiations are currently underway with Singapore, Malaysia, the United Kingdom, and Oman, among other nations. IBN goes on to say that financial benefits for investors include allowing foreign investors to hold 100% of company, repatriation tax holidays for specific industries and regions, and the availability of competitive corporate income tax, CIT. Now, what are the obstacles then with all the uh, favorable factors at play one should question why nepal has not been able to draw significant fdi political risk is one of the main obstacles to foreign direct investment according to dr koirala this speaks to the possibility of shifting governmental regulations political unrest and other political variables that can have impacts on the investment's uh, profitability. Another significant element affecting FDI is corruption. Speaking anonymously, a senior diplomat asked, who would think that a nation run by power-hungry individuals could attract investors? All that exists here is the custom. In conclusion, uh, what I would like to say is, experts believe that uh, Financial incentives, developed infrastructure such as energy, uh, internet, and a solid road link, favorable administrative and regulatory frameworks, investment in education and political, economic, and legal uh, stability are only a few of the essential components that the government must supply for ensuring tangible investment in Nepal. How do investors get along? in Nepal? Do entrepreneurs receive recognition for creating jobs? Is the current labor legislation conducive to the expansion and advancement of the industries? How do industrialists and other business people see political leaders and vice versa? How do their sister organizations obtain the political backing to sabotage startup bids in Nepal? What uh, political promises exist for Nepali indigenous business to prosper? Without addressing these questions seriously, the government-led investment summit won't be a practical endeavor. It will just be a formality. With this, uh, let me conclude this uh, episode. I'll come up with the, the new uh, issue uh, very soon. Thank you for watching me. Uh, thank you and Namaskar.